Good afternoon. Today we are going to learn about how to solve a quadratic equation that involves taking the square root of both sides. This is a completely wonderful method. It's quick, it's pretty easy. The only caveat here is that it is, it is used to find solutions and it does not work to factor. The other interesting thing about this particular kind of equation is that there is no bx term, so there's no middle term. It works for binomials only, but I do think you're gonna like it. So um, let's just look at what the steps are. The first step is that we are going to isolate, we're gonna isolate our squared variable, so the ax squared. Then we are gonna take the square root of both sides When we take the square root of both sides, we're gonna remember that there are two solutions, the positive and the negative solution. Once we have our two solutions, we are going to rationalize the denominator or rationalize the radical if we need to. Rationalize, I'm not, I don't even know what I'm talking about. We're not gonna rationalize, I guess we would, um, but we're gonna simplify it. And then we're gonna use the information that we learned in our last class and we're gonna remember that if there are complex numbers involved, then unlike a week ago, we can now actually simplify when there's a negative under the radical symbol. And before last class's lesson, we would not have been able to do that. So let's try a couple of examples. We are gonna start super simple. And I'm not gonna do all of these examples, but, um, but we will do a few of them. The first one we're gonna do is just to show concept we isolate the variable, in this case, the variable is already by itself, the squared variable. So actually I'm gonna rewrite it just so we have something to work with. I am going to take the square root of both sides. Remember that the square root and squaring are inverse operations, so those will cancel each other out. And I end up with x equals, don't be tempted to say five because it's really plus or minus. Five. And those are my two solutions. If you're thinking about what this means graphically, it's a parabola, and the parabola is going to cross the x axis. Its x intercepts are at negative 5, 5. So your parabola looks something like this. And so that's what we've done. We have found the two solutions to this quadratic equation. All right, for the next one, the first thing I need to do is isolate my variable. And in this one, I'll notice that I am multiplying the x squared by the term three. Sorry, it's a coefficient. These threes will cancel out and now I have an isolated variable x squared. Step two is to take the square root of both sides. So I will do that. These are inverse operations. They undo each other. Ah, I don't need that because it goes away. And I am left with the positive and the negative root of 27. I have to be careful here because in this particular case, the square root of 27 is not simplified. There is a perfect square nine inside of this. So I'm gonna say it's really plus or minus the square root of nine times the square root of three. And I can simplify this one more step because the square root of nine is three and the square root of three just tags along. Don't forget your plus or minus because there are two solutions and it would look something like this if I were to graph it. All right, examples three and four are very similar. I'm gonna do example uh, let's do example one because it involves fractions. The steps that you take are the same for both of these problems. This one just involves simplifying a fraction. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. So I think there is a little bit more value in this one. First thing I'm gonna do is isolate my x squared term. I'm gonna do that by adding one to both sides. Then I'm going to divide both sides by four to get my x squared term this to, be, uh, uh, to be alone. I am not going to write this as a decimal. Please resist that temptation. 
because at this point I would take the square root of both sides and I can take the square root of a fraction, especially if both the numerator and the denominator are perfect squares, and in this case, they are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, oh, this is the square root of 1 fourth, which is really, if you remember your rules of radicals, the square root of one divided by, slippery thing, the square root of four. And each of these can be independently simplified. The square root of one is one, the square root of four is two. So I'm left with solutions of plus or minus one half. There we go. All right, like I said, this one, I invite you to pause the video, try simplifying it yourself, and then when you are done, you should end up with solutions that look like, ah, oh, man, see, I just looked at my solution. I'm actually gonna wanna solve this. Nah, I'm gonna let you do it, plus or minus. I will give you the answer though. And if you need to see it's worked out, feel free to check the key online. Let's look at example five. This one involves um, a two, uh, some two additional steps and it involves um, an, in, uh, an imaginary number like example four did. So it's a good one for a lot of reasons. First thing I'm gonna do is isolate my variable. To undo dividing, I'm gonna use the inverse operation which is multiplication. And I'm gonna multiply both sides of my equation by 25 and I end up with x squared equals negative 200. At this point, I take the square root of both sides. Inverse operations undo each other, so I end up with x equals, I have two roots, the positive and the negative, of square root negative 200. Now I need to simplify under my radical symbol. I'm gonna do that keeping my plus or minus, by rewriting this as the square root of negative one, because I know that that is the definition of an imaginary number. I'm gonna rewrite this as 100 times square root two. So hopefully you'll see that negative one times 100 times two is a, just a, a broken down version of negative 200. So when I take the square root of negative one, that gives me i, the square root of 10, sorry, the square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of two is already simplified, so I can't go any further, it's a prime number. So finally, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit friendlier way, and I'm gonna say 10i square root two, or you could say 10 square root two i. Not forgetting your plus or minus, which to be honest, I almost forgot. All right, so that's how we, um, how we can handle our imaginary numbers, taking the square root of a negative, and a, a, an example of something that, where the variable is being divided, and how to use inverse operations to isolate that variable. The next one looks intimidating, but it's really pretty straightforward. Just like a, with the previous ones, I am going to isolate my grouping symbol, in this case by dividing by four, I'm going to retain that grouping symbol because everything inside the parentheses is being squared and I get r minus 1 quantity squared equals 2. Rather than multiply this out, I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. I'm left, because these are inverse operations, I'm left with just the contents of my grouping symbol and that is going to be equal to plus or minus, because there's two roots, square root two. From here, my variable isn't quite isolated, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to add one to both sides of my equation, and I'm left with r equals one plus or minus square root two. I'm going to go ahead and put the one in front because that is um, traditionally just how you will see it. You could have written it if you had broken it in to uh, r equals one plus square root two and r equals one minus square root two. But you'll find that most people prefer doing a shorter version. 
caught myself at the page, but, but actually there's not, folks. That is it, a short lesson for today. Make sure you practice because that is the only way you build muscle memory and tenacity. Hope to see y'all again soon.